How's everyone doing? Oh, man. Good. Good. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. We have an amazing <laughs> Lecter's yeah. Club episode here today for the audience. This is our recommendation roundtable. We were recommended romance movies for the mm -hmm. holiday season, Valentine's Day, that we're going to give our quick review, our quick thoughts, our opinions, maybe a rant or two in there tonight. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Uh, you guys ready for this? Uh, let me put up actually just one banner just to remind the audience, if you love movies just like us, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe to support the channel. Of course, go ahead and spread some more love through those super chats <laughs> and then check out memberships for some sweet perks like choosing future stream topics. But yeah, you guys ready? Hubba hubba huck. You want to start off? Now, now Mike, I, I, I just want to start by saying, I think you should change that to smash the like button to hug the like button or yeah. kiss the okay. like button. Okay, you wanted, to make, the, you wanted to make it PG. I thought smashed work with the- Oh, like, I see. You're more. getting you're getting dirty. <laughs> you're getting you dirty. Right? Like, <laughs> like, hey, okay, you know, requires oh, I understand. Yes. I didn't realize you, you were using just that like button. Slang. All right. Uh, sure. Let's dive in, y'all. Okay. Here we go. So, um, I was given uh, some great movie choices. Um, okay. So, we're just going to cut loose tonight. <laughs> so, surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly, point, right? surprisingly, and, and I'm and I'm a little sad to say, uh, the one on the bottom tonight is Sabrina. Oh. And I know, and let me tell you what. And let me let me tell you what. And it was it was a close call between that and the other one. <laughs> but so here's the thing. Uh, I didn't dislike it, but and and again, Audrey Hepburn saves that movie. It's just so good. Um, and and you just you just have to sort of take the story as it is, right? So she's this uh, daughter of a chauffeur, and she's been in love with this guy. You know, the the guy that's the the rich person's son, uh, like all her life. You know, and he's kind of a playboy, uh, played by William Holden, and his older brother. That's the um, the Humphrey Bogart character. So, <laughs> look. William Holden is just a player, okay? He's a real womanizer. And you have to take the story. You can't say, oh, take it, you know, in the time that it was made. No, because it's still the story is he's kind of an a-hole who treats women like just because he wants them and he's rich enough to, to do that. And it's sad that that's who she loves because she's just, that's the guy she's known all her life. So she has a crush on him, not really knowing the kind of guy that she is. So that's who she falls for. And he does it while he's engaged. It, that, there's, that makes him so horribly unlikable. Like, I get it. And, and he's a charming guy. But if you are engaged to be married, he's not just dating another woman. He's engaged to be, and the And she's sweet. Like, this other girl is nice. And, and, and so, uh, so I had a hard time, like, wanting that relationship to happen. And then of course she segues into actually falling in love with the Humphrey Bogart, who is like literally 30 years older than she is. And I kind of get it. Like I, I really wished him that Cary Grant was the one he was supposed to be that role. And he dropped out one week before filming began, you know, cause I, I watched uh, and I, and I watched all the making ofs for all three of these movies and it actually helped me enjoy them more. So I actually ended up liking Sabrina a bit more after seeing the making of stuff, but it's also very contradicting because in the making of it says, Oh, Humphrey Bogart was thrilled to do this movie. And then everywhere else I look says he couldn't stand Audrey Hepburn since she was a horrible <laughs> actress. He couldn't stand William Holden cause he was a D bag. I'm like, so I am sure this was made to placate, you know, <laughs> the other people in the movie. Um, and so having her fall in love with Bogart being literally old enough to be her dad, 
I just didn't think the chemistry, like I thought she had fantastic chemistry with um, Robert Mitchum, who was much older than her in Roman Holiday. I love that. I told you, Tim, that was five stars for me. That was like, that was a winner of a, of a chemistry there. And, and in that, you know, he had to do a relationship with her to, to get a story. So he was using nefarious means, but it turned into something and he let those go. So that was redeeming for him. That was Gregory so, Peck. I don't th how much older was what he? I say? Oh, I said Robert Mitchum. You're right. Gregory yeah, Peck. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, I get those two confused. But you know what I mean? Like he's yeah, yeah, an yeah. older guy, but there was charm to him. There was chemistry with those two. Just, uh, just loved him. And I didn't feel that same connection or love, even though Audrey's the one doing all the selling. Like yeah. she is a hundred percent selling the love, selling the relationship, and the dudes are just <laughs> not. You know, it's funny. Carrie, you you mentioned about Carrie almost in the role, and he aged yeah. better than Bo Bogart was forty from when he was younger. Like he he always yeah. looked <laughs> old. Uh, yeah. Carrie Grant was still a, a, a good twenty something years where he almost didn't take the role in Charade opposite. Audrey because he's like yeah. 20 some years older. So he, I mean, he could have even been the father, but uh, he just sure. aged, he aged better. Uh, Humphrey <laughs> Bogart just, he's a Steve Martin type. He was just always old. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Um, because I think charade, they, they had chemistry in that film. Yeah. I, and I love charade. Yeah. So what uh, did I miss anything, Tim, that, I mean, I, I, like I said, I came into it like not really <laughs> knowing what to expect. Um, At least you yeah. like in it, though. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've not not liked Audrey yet. She's just she's yeah. one of my faves now. All right, so that was number one. So number two is Derek's, and that's we're going in tolerable cruelty. <laughs> yeah, Mike's all happy. <laughs> all right, so uh, of course I didn't know. Derek, this is a classic Derek recommendation because it's a Coen brother movie, mm -hmm. which ironically I didn't know going into this because I've never known them to make movies like this. They, I, even in the making of it says this is probably their most commercial attempt yeah. at a movie like this. Um, so yeah, and look, and people watching this know that when we rant, there's spoilers. So if you haven't seen any of these movies, maybe punch away. But um, so okay, so this stars George Clooney, Catherine Zeta Jones. And he's uh, an attorney and she's kind of a gold digger, right? She marries people for their money. And then, but circumstances happen that she doesn't get the money. So she starts out with this rich guy. And when they get a divorce though, he had a prenup in line. So she lost money. So she didn't get the money. And I don't know. I don't want to give away too many of the nuances about she then gets married again for money, but that didn't quite, it's not quite what it seems. You know, Derek knows what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so Clooney sort of like starts to fall in love with her. And by happenstance, they end up finally becoming a couple. Um, but, you know, it, he's got this. What, what's, what's the prenup called, Der uh, Derek? It's oh, like the, I can't remember, but yeah, it's got yeah, this. There's a name. Like, like, name they're like, oh, that's a yeah. breakable or whatever. Yeah. But like, oh, the, the, the Riley contract or whatever it was. Yeah, like, oh, you got the Riley contract. Oh, you can't. That's, and then what that's supposed to do is protect both parties with exactly what they came in with uh, is what they leave with in, in the marriage. And so he thinks that she's filthy rich because of the second marriage that she did, but <laughs> she's not really. So, you know, her. so here, let me cut to the chase. So <laughs> Catherine Zeta Jones dupes Clooney who legit falls in love with her. He loves her and he marries her for love because he even signs the thing. Cause he knew she was rich and didn't care. And he's also a very wealthy lawyer. So he's, he's got mm. his own money. And then, you know, she's like, do you trust me? And he goes, yes, I trust. And this is just before they have sex. So, of course, it's just, he's like, hey, yeah, I trust you. You know, he's like, say yes to anything. So she rips the contract and he goes, honey, you're naked. You're exposed. And and, yeah. it's, and Clooney has great expressions in this. Clooney's expressions are quite hilarious. But he thinks by her ripping it up, oh, she's she's like her her fortune can now become his. But she made the call turns out she's not rich you know so she wants his money and instantly the next morning she's packing her bags and she's out and i'm like oh man so the they're them as a couple you're not 
I'm like, oh, okay. Am I supposed to root? Who am I rooting for now? Because that's all she wanted. And then so when they kind of sort of get back together again, it seemed disingenuous because the very next scene, she seems regretful. Whereas the scene just before she was elated to be taking him for his money. So I felt like there was actually direction on the Coen brothers completely missed selling that properly because I mean, that's a fine line. You've got to like turn her into a bad guy, but then also you need to keep liking her. And then you also need to believe that she loved him, which at no point because of that stunt she pulled, did I ever think she did. So for it to end like they love each other, it's just, it was a strange mix. So Derek, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. I, I was trying to like look at what that thing is called. I could find it. Uh, <laughs> the contract name. But yeah, essentially, yeah, they're divorce. He's a divorce lawyer. Yeah, he specializes in a specific kind of prenup contract. I mean, you, yeah. you hit it all. You hit all the beats. It's been a while since I've watched it. I just remember, I, I also said that about that movie, that it's probably the most commercial movie they've ever done because and i still think mike it. would like it they didn't make it initially <laughs> they rewrote it and yeah. then directed it so you can tell like they fixed it essentially i'm sure it was a pretty uh, generic movie beforehand well, that might have something to do with it maybe that's why some of the things you know and even yeah. like the ending with the hitman was kind of funny but it, it just became a little disjointed in that third act it, it all yeah. kind of like had just like weird connective tissue that wasn't mm -hmm. uh, clicking, but I did even give the second half, Derek, a, a, an actual rewatch because I was so disappointed with how that ended. I'm like, did I miss something? So I picked it up from the moment they got married and watched it again. And I'm like, yeah, it just, you know, but I mean, that oh, that's why I like I, I felt like I was missing something. I'm like, did I miss the love part? So and then I watched all the making of so that I could like like it more. So and I think. <laughs> And that's what just narrowly, the only thing that gave it narrowly a thing above Sabrina is that I just didn't buy the men in Sabrina. <laughs> Where, sure, yeah. Whereas I, I bought about 50% more in, in that one. So Nice. It's a, yeah, it's, like, I'm, it's a funny movie, but yeah, honestly, that's my least favorite one of their movies. <laughs> so. Oh, good. I got your least favorite. <laughs> I feel so, so charmed. It's coming oh, from the guy who that's their favorite movie, and it's my which still means, you know, I think it's pretty good. Oh, God. All right. I'm worried. All right. So the final one, of course, is Mike's recommendation. That is Adjustment Bureau. Um, so, all right. An interesting movie. I did not expect at all what was in this film. How do you explain this film, Mike? Okay. So Matt Damon works at this company. <laughs> um, and and he, 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 well, okay. He's actually running for office. He's like a, a, a political, he's a politician and he wants to go for it. He wants to eventually become president and stuff like that. And um, of course, something happens at the last second as he's peeking in the polls that some stunt he pulled, you know, he sucker punched somebody at a bar when he wasn't in college or something like that. And it just tanks his momentum. And then that's it. And then as he's sort of bummed out he goes into the men's room it's empty and he's talking to himself sort of giving himself his speech and then out comes emily blunt who is sort of hiding in the bathroom heard everything and then somehow gives him the the pep talk of his life they kiss and she runs away and then these guys are like hey get that girl what's she doing in there and and then she disappears you know i'm like oh well that was interesting you know so instantly your brain's like okay what's real here what's what's the setup I mean, Mike, do we even say what the guys are? Yeah, like, yeah. You, okay, you okay. To, so, so the lead guys from Mad Men. I always forget his name, but he's one of the guys I'm from Ham? Mad. Oh, uh, not Ham. The other, the the white haired guy, the one that played um Tony oh. Stark's dad. Okay, Tony I, don't know. I know Tony Stark's dad. Yeah, yeah, that guy. The, you know, the really <laughs> handsome white haired guy. Um, <laughs> so it th he is part of the adjustment bureau, right? And so is. Um, guy that played Sam in the Avengers, um, yeah, Anthony yeah, Mackie, Mackie, right? Yeah, Anthony Mackie's in that, well, and uh, and so that you know, that <laughs> so <laughs> he can't see Emily Blunt anymore, like she she leaves and he's never gonna see her again. And then one day he gets on a bus, and it was like three months later or something, she's on the bus, and he's like, Oh my god, it's you, and and you could tell he was taken with her, right? And he sits next to her and he gets her number and everything. 
And uh, but it's but that's not supposed to happen. The Adjustment Bureau, it's kind of like they're they're a uh, an organization. It's sort of like Quantum Leap, right? To set right what once went wrong. You know, the 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 plot line of Quantum Leap, right? Well, these guys try to keep things in check, you know, so that life and society itself maintain a balance. And then, of course, you know, it's like, well, what about all these world wars? You call that balance? And, you know, so it, it gets, you know, into that just a little bit. So when he meets her again, it's not supposed to happen. So now he's falling in love and, and they open this book and this book is like starting to branch off and change, change the timeline and like, what's going on? And so Anthony Mackie's character misses the moment where he's supposed to stop her from getting on that bus. And he's hauling ass too. And by missing that, everything changes. Like, like the direction of life changes. And all he wants now is love, but they need him to become a politician and become president. Like that's what they need. That's what society needs. And it's just this really fascinating movie that has all these good twists and turns and, and okay. And here it is chemistry. It is the only movie I watched out of all three that had absolutely lovable, huggable chemistry between the two leads that you fully believe. And so with that, and being that this is a romance episode, I really, really love this movie. Oh, and I forgot to do. Okay, so let's go back to it. So, uh, the 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 ratings. Okay, so recommendation, of course, Tim. You know, I'm digging her. So four stars on the recommendation because you know, digging her, and I'd still give it probably uh, like three stars. You know, probably yeah. So which means I'll probably give this also three stars. Um, and and knowing that it's a Coen brother movie. I'm going to have to give you the same rating. Four that it was Cohen, three on the movie. Uh, Mike, uh, so dialing me in, I'll give you a four on the recommendation just because I didn't know anything about it, and a five on the movie. Yeah. Nice. So, there you go. That is amazing. I I was really about that movie movie. For like, like, and I found, that, I found this at a swap meet, and now I couldn't be happier to have stumbled across it and – you gave me a reason to watch. That something. was the only recommendation I was worried about because I love that really? movie so much. It's number 13 on my all time list. Like Is that I said, right? you know, burn Howard the Duck, throw out Shazam 2. <laughs> if I okay. can keep the adjustment, Burrow. <laughs> this movie is perfection. It is yeah, the number one it. romance movie of all time. I'm telling you, if you haven't seen this movie, it has everything in there. But Huck, you did a great job and you nailed it. The chemistry. Matt Damien, Emily Brooks. Oh, they are so good. Oh, and let me tell you something. So she's also in the movie. She's a professional dancer. I'm like, oh, man, they are so lucky they, they hired Emily Blunt. She must have a, a ballet background. Zero. She has absolutely no dancing background. And so by watching the making of, she literally trained her ass off to become an, a legit ballet dancer. And I like she had me fooled. She's that incredible and um, and of course you see her in you know um, edge of tomorrow where she keeps that fitness going you know so so she's yeah. a a good actress so yeah i mean if you guys haven't seen it i would definitely say mike oh, did good on that one it's so good i mean the movie has everything if you love movies about fate and destiny oh yeah it. it's so good and the writing the writing is so good because when you think of oh, is there a question I could ask right now? Something conflicting that would confuse the plot because it can be complex. It gives you an answer. Like, oh, explains, oh, why did we have the dark ages and the world wars and all that? Like there's these yeah. little lines of dialogue in there that just clears it up perfectly and it still flows so smoothly. So, Yeah, and the direction is excellent because you can get lost in a movie like this mm -hmm. because it's too, it's so bizarre that it could have been bad. But it but doesn't confuse, confuse you at all. There's no, no. confusion. It gives no. you the right amount of exposition. You understand all the characters. You understand all their motives. And you're on board with the characters you're supposed to be on board with. You like the likable characters. And so you have people to root for the entire movie. Yeah. So the ending is <laughs> great. The beginning is great. All of it's great. So good. Perfect. I'm good. There we go. All right. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Off my soapbox. All right. Sorry, sorry, you Tim. Eric, you bad. ready? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, you're you're making me jealous, Huck, because that was the only other movie on his list that I hadn't seen, but you beat me to it. Uh, we'll um, watch it. I mean, I mean, get it. Yeah. Having said that, 
I'll go in order of the screen because it also happens to be the order of the pref my preference of the movies I watched. Uh, so we'll start with Mike's, which was what the hell is it called? When we first met on the Netflix, or not like the generic Netflix romantic comedy number thirty-seven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Groundhog Day? You guys, you've seen Groundhog yeah, Day. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I've seen Groundhog we'll watch Day. That again, better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like if you take Groundhog Day yeah. and Big and like mashed them together into one time travel romantic comedy. That's what it is. Man, and it honestly awesome. was better than I expected. I'll give it props for that. <laughs> Mike says it's awesome. <laughs> because I hate romantic comedies for the most part, especially when they're typical. This at least had a little sci-fi twist to it, which makes it a little more fun to watch. So Adam Devine, who I like, which thank God, because if he wasn't in that movie, it would have zero personality whatsoever. <laughs> oh, Alexandra Daddario is an awful actress. Oh, he's terrible. Oh, she's terrible. awful. I don't think she's an awful actress. actress. No, she's, she's bad in there. No, one. she's terrible in general. She's like a plank of wood. She has no yeah. personality. No, I can't. She's pretty. That's what she's got going for her. Yeah. She is she's pretty. got those eyes, but that's about all she's got. I thought um, she was good in San Andreas. Oh yeah, that movie. Uh, she's in that? Her, her, wet, her wet shirt is what she had going for her in San Andreas. It's uh, <laughs> go on. Her, her in San Andreas. Is I don't well. know that. Uh, okay. But uh, but yeah, so he's in love with Alexandra Dedebe, whatever her name is, and uh, <laughs> he it's meets tough. her, and then they like they get a good buddy ship going at this party, and then. He messes it up and he like hugs her instead of going in for the you know the move. And then in present day, she's getting engaged to this other guy who's like the nicest guy in the world, and you can't help but like the guy, like to the point where it's like sickening, but that's the joke. So he goes to this photo booth at this club he plays fake piano at. Um, very obvious fake piano. My wife and I kept laughing <laughs> anytime we would cut to his hands on the piano and then yeah. to a very different shot of his face and then back it might have all been most like a... <laughs> like if they wanted to just like play that joke out in my brain it would have been like a black guy's hands and then adam device <laughs> like it would have been, been better that, that's that how was accurate it was <laughs> um <laughs> but anyways uh, he goes into this photo booth and then he like wishes he could go back and fix his mistake and it travels him back in time. So it's kind of like the what's it called machine from big that grants yeah. his wish. And he goes back Zoltan, and he tries Zoltan. to the Zoltan, yeah, Zoltar machine. Yeah. That's what it was. he yeah. goes back and he tries to fix it, but then he like overcompensates by being like too well, he knows too much about her where it's creepy, and then he like screws up again and he keeps having to go back and back and forth and forth. And then long story short, he realizes that the guy who's super nice is the guy he's she's supposed to be with and then he's secretly supposed to be with her best friend the entire time spoiler alert which they're fine together but sadly she wasn't given enough to do in the movie uh but yeah like it's fine it's exactly what i expected it to be once i realized what kind of movie it was so for that i would i would give the recommendation a three because that's about as good as I can give a romantic comedy recommendation to myself. Uh, the movie, I'd say, I'll give it a two and a half. Like, it's worth, it's fine to watch, but it's very forgettable. Because it's just like, like I said, it's like Groundhog Day, but not as good. So, like, go watch Groundhog Day. Or the one with Andy Samberg. <laughs> that's kind of a similar concept. The high concept romantic comedies they have. Yeah, like the funny I, thing is, we were like half an hour into this movie, and my wife realized she'd seen it before. That's how. <laughs> movie oh, that's that's always like, sad. I did see this with like she watched it without me one day. I was like, oh, so it's really good. Uh, that's fine. Nice you know, and memorable. Like bad yeah. or anything. Yeah, I I saw it when it came out on Netflix, and it is just pretty much what most of Netflix movies are—just pure, forgettable, just I guess entertainment, but like. Most of Netflix movies are trash, and that's essentially fits in with that. The, I, don't miss it, audience. There's a perfection. Yeah. There's a perfection. Go watch it. It's Go Netflix watch Big and Groundhog Day. That's original movie. I can tell you that much. Another 90 minutes. But yeah. Like, it, like I said, it was better than I expected. I got through it, thanks to Adam Devine's personality and fake piano hands. Um, <laughs> yeah, next, Puck gave me Crazy Rich Asians, which I... It's, 
a movie I've been meaning to see since it came out, and for some reason I just didn't. Um, it I watched it last night. It has very cute characters in it. Michelle Yeoh's in it. I totally forgot she was in it, and she's always awesome, so that's cool. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. The, whole, the whole cast is all Asian actors, which was like. It's not like a big deal, but it is like at the time it came out back in like what 2018, 2019, or whatever. I remember it got nominated at the SAG Ensemble Award, so that was cool. Um, it's a cute movie. <laughs> um, it has gorgeous like set decoration and costumes and stuff. Like, that's the best thing about the movie is all the yeah. locations you get to see and all these ridiculously rich Asian families. Um, but yeah, they have these awesome ball gowns and these ridiculous parties and this wedding they go to is just like absurd. So visually it's a very nice movie. It's perfectly well made and everything. The only bad thing about it <laughs> is that <laughs> it is a completely generic my kids not good enough for you plot line movie which is like 80% of romantic comedies. So that made me go like, "Oh, it's this movie." Yeah. But it's really yeah. pretty. So, and, you know, the characters are fun and cute enough that it was worth a watch. I'm glad I finally watched it. But overall, I was just like, yeah, it's this movie. It's the, my kid's not good enough for you. And then I changed my mind at the last minute and it's adorable. <laughs> romantic comedies. So that's the gist of romantic comedies, everybody. Man, but I Crazy Rich Asians at least makes it worth the watch because, damn, that place looks pretty. Uh, <laughs> I am surprised though. There's it's two or three books in that franchise, and I'm shocked we didn't get a sequel. Oh, really? Yeah, it did really yeah. well. All things considered, it did very well. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a good movie, but you know, it's just it's a romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that we we knew that we I was going to go there with most of these probably, uh, but as a recommendation, it's something I definitely wanted to see, so I'll give it a four. And as a movie. I'll give, I'll give it a three out of five. Like, it's totally solid. You should watch it. If you like romantic comedies, you'll probably really like it. But if you don't, you'll be like, yeah, it's fine. Like me. <laughs> that's, where I, <laughs> that's where I put it. Well, I'm Keanu glad I watched it. I doubt yeah. I would watch it again. That's where I put it. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then we're on okay. to Tim's recommendation. Uh, this year's Best Picture nominated Past Lives, which I've been looking forward to seeing for an entire year since it came out at Sundance, and everyone said it was the greatest thing they've ever seen. Best thing since sliced bread, they said. Um, <laughs> well, if you so, don't like bread, I'll yeah. take some bread. But sadly, I am... <laughs> I have whatever Crohn's disease. I can't eat wheat. Um, but, <laughs> but honestly, like, it was exactly what I expected. Like, I knew the storyline. It's about a young asian couple one of them leaves to come to america with her family as a kid and then they kind of have this long lost love crush relationship that sort of re-manifests itself in adulthood after she is remarried 24 years later i think is what it is and it's like the drama of bringing her past love into her present life with her husband and uh the it's beautifully shot i really like the shot compositions are very thought through. Like there's a lot of beautiful imagery of them splitting ways as children. Like up oh the yeah, stairs, I, I loved that down the sidewalk, all that stuff. There's a lot of good imagery with like reflections and puddles and mirrors and stuff throughout the entire movie that I loved. Um, my biggest hiccup with it is that it took about half the movie for me to really get into it. Like I liked it fine. Like everything was going where I thought it was going. But it just seemed to be taking too long to get there. And their relationship was developed exactly how I expected. They like they chatted each other. He found her like 12 years later, and they kind of chatted online for a while. And then she gets upset and overwhelmed by it to the point where she just like cuts off communication with him because she wants to focus on her life in New York, is where she lives. And then 12 years later, he finally comes to visit her after she's been married for 12 years or seven years or something like that. And uh, the cast is great. The actors are all really good. Half the movie is in, uh, wow, brain fart. Is it Korean? Am I crazy? It's Korean, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm <laughs> like, I want to be wrong, but I think it's Korean. Yeah. And uh, so once he, once he comes to New York to meet her finally face-to-face -face is when the movie gets great. 
in my opinion, which is funny because my wife watched it with me and she was bored out of her mind. <laughs> <laughs> and we stopped watching it about halfway into it because we watched it kind of late and I'm an old man and I worked that day. So the next morning I watched the entire thing by myself, got through the part where we got, and the, the second half of this movie is awesome. Like, it's not like a ton of spectacle amazing dramatic scenes it's just it's, conversations that's yep. it's, it's that's just awesome. amazingly written conversations <laughs> between her and him her and her husband about the situation he even makes a clever joke about <laughs> how if this was a movie he'd be the bad white guy who's yeah. in the way of her true love's relationship her, which i thought was funny her and husband was great he was a great yep. guy yeah he's like the nicest guy and like <laughs> i love the scene where he's talking to her like they're all at a bar and the husband like kind of knows he knows some korean but not enough to like follow a conversation and uh he goes he's telling the her that he he doesn't know how to feel and he feels so mad because he wishes he didn't like it, her husband so much <laughs> it's like stuff like that there's, there's this amazing conversation so if you can get through the slow pace of the first half which isn't like a bad thing it's just kind of how the movie is the second half of it pays it off in spades. It's like some of the best dialogue writing I've seen in forever. So that definitely made the movie go from like, why is this getting nominated to Best Picture to like, oh, wow, this is an amazing screenplay. And yeah, in any other director's hands, this would be either super melodramatic or cheesy. And then she, but Celine Song, who wrote and directed the movie, just handles it perfectly because it's her movie it's her baby and she did a great job so i really enjoyed past lives once i got through it like the first half was kind of like uh, okay i really like this <laughs> so i'm glad i finally saw it so i only got three left for the year for best picture nominees so as a recommendation i gave it a five because it's a best picture nominee i need to see it uh but the movie i'd give a four with wiggle room if i rewatch it i might like it more i might like it less it all depends on the pacing but it's a very solid movie and it's honestly worth getting through the slower first half to see the amazing conversations in the second half so that's where i am on that one yeah it was uh i agree with the i i actually did like the first half but that second half is phenomenal uh but yeah i was it was so interesting in that like I felt so bad for the the main guy and how things are playing out, but her husband is also amazing. Like she had yeah. <laughs> really great guys in her life that both wanted her, and it, it's it was a I, I that was tied for my favorite movie of the year. I freaking nice. enjoyed that one. Yeah, I liked it a lot more than my wife. Like I said, uh, <laughs> yeah. So give me has some of the best relationships. So plug this because this is amazing. Derek said it was a five, right? Tim's one of his favorite movies of this year. So if you want to do a high level super chat of $20 or more or sign up <laughs> for a high tier membership, you yourself can have the amazing past lives with slipcover Blu-ray. Ooh. <laughs> can I just have it? <laughs> yeah, can, I just have so, it. <laughs> can I just have it for shipping? <laughs> so it was a good love triangle, huh? Uh, yeah. No, not for me. I didn't love it. I'm trying to get rid of it. <laughs> no, that movie. Oh, I thought you had a spare. No, no, that movie's awful. I will never watch it again. <laughs> it is boring. It is a snooze fest. And the worst part, it's not a romance movie. You might have just seen my screen go blank for a long time. Why yeah, have right. gone so long? I'm like, I got to find this movie to promote. I'm looking at my romance section. I can't find it. Where is it? Oh, I forgot. It's not romance, it's drama. So I had to go to the other shelf. Grab the drama <laughs> title here. Yeah, Past Lives is purely a drama, no romance. It's ridiculous. It doesn't even end up in a happy romance. The girl's already married. Romance doesn't always work out. There. No, this I, is ridiculous. That this makes no sense. Friend zone guy. I don't know what this is. You, you, re you realize romance. almost Terrible half drama. marriages end in divorce, right? Like, <laughs> relationships are not all roses. Which is why this is a drama and not <laughs> romance. I, I just, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, though, at the idea that things have to play out, like, happy to be romance. That is yeah, so me. astonishingly crazy to if me. If it turns out negative, <laughs> you're drama. But if you like drama, you may like it. Unlike me. Well, then, <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. 
when we get to Blue Valentine. Oh though, gosh, we'll uh, save the rant say, when we get uh, to me. Uh, I'm gonna say when we get to that, just know I gave Mike as you guys saw, I gave him fair as much fair warning as possible. True. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I, I'm putting that all on him. Yeah. <laughs> all on him. It's gonna be good. <laughs> It's Blue Valentine's the funniest movie outside of May, December. I, I said, do you want happy or sad? He's like, either one's okay. I gave sad. <laughs> <laughs> I heard drama or rom-com. I didn't hear happy or sad. The drama <laughs> implies emotions. <laughs> My God. Well, because to me, like, Adjustment Burrow would be more drama. Because it's not comedy. It's not funny. So I would put it more drama. That's what I was expecting. <laughs> That's oh. <laughs> Jokes on you. You didn't want to have to feel things, Tim. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get to that. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. But anyway, there you go. Past lives. And most people love it. <laughs> uh, my wife right. agrees with me, though, Mike. At least, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> All right. But you might want to go for She only watched the first half. <laughs> All right. So actually, going in order works pretty well here, too. So. Uh, start with Mike. I, I so I. To be fair, I can't. I can't really rant on this one because Mike has given me my very first DNF. Uh, I, I got an hour and seven minutes into to Cyrano, and I watched it today. I watched both uh, Huck's choice and Mike Mike's choice today. So I got an hour and seven minutes into this movie. I don't DNF very much. Uh, this movie is a, is a musical. Uh, one man is pining for the woman while the woman is pining for someone else. But it, its genre is musical. It is quite possibly some of the absolute worst music I have heard in a musical. And if you oh, no. at the music, it's it's it just fell on its face. Like I was actually I, like I was sitting there. I'm like playing with my phone. I'm like, dude, what the hell? And I look at the time and I'm like. I'm 45 minutes into this movie. I feel like I've been at, I actually, I messaged Derek. I privately messaged Derek. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm going to DNF this movie. Like I can't, I can't handle this. And uh, I kept, I kept going on it and I kept going. Oh, I wasn't it. part of that. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I got to that point and my wife was like, you can stop. And I'm like, you can. I, I, have, I have to like, you when, can't do it. When you get to it. When you get to a certain point and you find zero, like zero enjoyment, I'm not the type that like I feel like I have to finish. Like nothing about that that other 50 some minutes was going to like it was horrible. Uh, <laughs> I wow. Peter Peter Dinklage has good presence on screen. Dude should never sing. He can't carry a note to save his life. He is awful at singing. <laughs> he is so funny because I think he's in the stage show too, isn't he? Dude, his singing, it's more so, it's not even singing, it's more so talking to music. Like a lot of the songs are the songs going, and it's this talking, singing type thing because he can't carry a note at all. The woman, uh, what's her name? Haley Bennett, she can carry a note, but her problem is the music itself sucked ass. But Peter Dinklage <laughs> can't carry a note. So he's like doing this talking singing and anytime the song would like, it does this thing where it would go for like 30 seconds and then it would switch to like, they're talking back into the song again and they're talking. I'm like, this isn't even like structured like an actual song. Uh, I, 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 I couldn't do it. Like that's my first <laughs> DNF out of, out of the movies on the stream. I finished things. I, believe I was you just going to say, Mike, don't feel bad. Iron, he finished things. The Iron Man first. I will take credit for that. <laughs> oh, I, shit, you're right. I forgot about that. I, I hated that we'll movie. Take, yeah. Don't take away my prize of yeah. the worst yeah. movie. I, bet. I wasn't too first. That's yeah. what we should go with. All right, so I'm happy. I'm the only one. Well, I haven't heard somewhere in time yet, but he hasn't DNF'd any of my movies yet. <laughs> uh, what does that even mean? What's DNF? What does that stand for? Did not finish that before? Never heard of that before. I, I didn't either, and I figured it out. No, not until you were yeah, yeah. For the audience at home, tell everybody what DNF it, means. It did not finish. It's not oh, even okay. a movie. It's not even a movie term. Like, uh, I mean, not that you'd be a, a racing fan or anything like that, but like, it's a general. Oh, like, sure, you yeah. did not finish. It's, it mm -hmm. happens in racing, in reading. If you didn't finish a book, it's a DNF. It's. Relatively common term. Like you don't want to hear in the bedroom, you DNF. Right? <laughs> you don't, 
DTF is okay. You don't want that. You don't want that. <laughs> guys, DNF last night. I feel terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, Cyrano is great. Check it out. Uh, yeah, it so it, it it exists. Uh, it's worse than and sad. Yeah. I think it's Tim is. Yeah, Tim is I, I, got, I got none of the sad in that time. So, like, honestly, God, I don't want to be an ass, but like, recommendation wise, it didn't. It nothing about it was me. Like, I didn't. I wasn't getting the sad. I wasn't getting the music was horrible. It was. I, it's like a two for recommendation i i honestly i i don't like that era either like the the victorian type era like in sure, general yeah, either, really. it's not my thing it uh, just dude i i fucking hate Man, it am I, i'm all watching it the other night singing along like getting teary-eyed i'm like this is so good <laughs> i think uh, tim's done a great job convincing me to not watch that movie it's yeah. so good oh, <laughs> that's funny i almost watched it because not, I, I don't think Huck would like it though but I he almost got in for best actor that year, and I was like, "Oh, poor Peter Dinklage!" And now, but then they heard he couldn't sing, so they were like, oh, no. "Are you saying there's Sarah no redeeming qualities to that movie?" <laughs> no. So it was nominated for costume design. Costume design and cinematography is is good. That's it. That's awesome. <laughs> who made that? Was it Mike Lay or whatever? I movie? don't know. Mike Reed. He didn't but, care. I'm looking at him. <laughs> who directed? There's a good director, I think. Yeah, Joe Joe Wright, I think it was actually. Right, the other one, yeah. not Mike Lee, yeah. Joe Wright. Yeah, he's good yeah. too. Yeah. Too bad. I, I, there might be people who probably, I mean, Mike loves it. Other people might love it, but it was definitively. Uh, oh, God. Uh, anyways, uh, mo moving on. Uh, next up, I did have this one already. So Huck recommended me Hearts and Souls at first. And I went to go watch this last night. And it was not even available like on any streaming services. It, I guess it was, and it got taken down. It's on yeah. nothing. So I needed no to, a quick pivot, and Huck gave me the pivot. And it, I, luckily, I already had this. I think I got it. Was it Groove? I think I got it from Groove. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah Groove had uh, it on sale. For really cheap. Uh, so this one is uh, Christopher <laughs> Reeve yeah. travels back in time, falls in love with this actress uh, back in 1912. Which it's easy to sum up, but the, I mean, I'm not trying to touch on any too big of plot points, but this handles, this is time travel. Uh, he time travels from 1980 back to 1912, but the time travel is a unique, it's no, no machinery right. or anything. Like right. It's this idea that you put yourself in the time period mentally and you kind of will it into existence. You will yourself there, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it was an it was a really cool concept for time travel. I, I haven't seen that done on screen before. Very I unique. thought that, yeah, I thought that was very unique. Uh, romance wise, though, when we got back to 1912, it wasn't as much my cup of tea. I, I so the acting was really good, and there was good chemistry, but I wasn't like vibing with what was going on with the relationship. I, I don't, I don't know what it was. It's definitely one I would revisit. Uh, it's, it's well-made. And I looked up, apparently this has a massive following. Like people yeah. love this movie. Yeah. But because I wasn't selling on the, like I wasn't invested in the relationship. I was having a hard time, but the last 10 minutes, Huck delivered the sad. And that I do like, I do like the sad being delivered, though. Uh, that the, the the ending redeemed more for me for the previous forty five minutes hour. They, he spends a, most of the movie back in nineteen twelve, right? Like a good chunk of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So it it's good enough that I will. It the, my score is not going to make it sound like it's good, but it's one I will revisit. It might be maybe I just wasn't mentally in that space i guess i don't know it's very it's well made it's way better than cyrano so it's well, <laughs> and it's great to, and it's great to see chris in something so different than superman yeah uh, i think he sells it yeah. yeah it's that's it the weird thing is there's nothing about it for me to really ding besides i just wasn't vibing with the relationship much and that's my own personal thing so I, I letterboxed, I gave it a two and a half. I might go to a three. It's yeah, somewhere okay. in there, but 
I would rewatch it and maybe the next time around enjoy it more. I, I don't know. Just like that. When I was back in 1912, I'm like, ah, I don't know. But that, <laughs> that ending though, man, that ending was very good. I'm not giving anything away, but damn that. Yeah, ending. Yeah. Oh, the ending's brilliant. Yeah. Cause I, I'll say for people to, for him to will himself back into 1912, you're supposed to kind of wear and have things around you that are of that time period. So yes. anything that anything else kind of takes you right out of it. Well, something happens when he's back in 1912 and where he's not in 1912 anymore. And it's, it's yeah. really freaking sad. It's super. <laughs> yeah. It's sad, but it's also brilliant. You're like, no, yeah. 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 Like, like he's wearing the, the period clothes. He's in a room. That's very time period. Like everything surrounding him, like tables and chairs. And, but yeah, I just, I love that. That's how they did the time travel in that. Yeah. yeah everything's super, usually like a yeah. gizmo or something, but it's just, yeah, sort of, it and it Who's takes that? him away. He doesn't nail it like no. right away. No. So super yeah, no creative, problem. super creative way to time travel, like super creative. I was like, that's pretty neat. So, yeah, I, I have nothing to really ding besides I, I just maybe it wasn't in that headspace. I don't know. I mean, it's it's well made. It's well made all around and it's well acted. So, I mean, recommendation wise, it's and you even got classic actresses and stuff, too. You got Teresa Wright in here. So, like, there's I, it's like a four for recommendation. I think I just okay. I, I need to revisit it. I'll just I need okay. to revisit. Cool. Uh, All right. And then end mine. Congratulations, Derek. You have yeah. you, you have given me my favorite recommendation out of everything so far for like this whole idea oh, of everything. 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 Holy buckets. Uh, <laughs> really. <laughs> really. So, Derek recommended to me Brooklyn, which oh this has been sitting on my shelf for years now. And Good I just idea. never got around to, to watching it for some reason. He gives me the recommendation. Okay, it's time to finally watch it. So, uh, how do you pronounce her name? I can never. I always say Cerise. Sersha. Sersha Rowan. Sersha. Okay. So, Sersha is an Irish immigrant coming to Brooklyn and starting a life here in the United States back in I think it's fifty one or fifty two somewhere around there. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's her struggling with, you know. Uh, homesickness and adjusting and then it pivots later on to her second half in, in Ireland like this movie spends half of it in Brooklyn half back in Ireland but there's two men vying for her the man she's she's falling for in Brooklyn and the man that wants her in Ireland I loved this so much uh, there's I, I, I don't think I've seen a movie so much where I've loved all of the characters like everyone Besides the, the the wicked woman in Ireland who owned the bread store, uh, she, could, <laughs> she could get bent. But uh, yeah, the the man that's going for her in Brooklyn, wonderful guy. He is he's he does nothing wrong in the entire movie. He's he's perfectly a gentleman to her, super sweet. The relationship is going as as you'd expect. There was no like hiccups or anything like that until something happens in the midpoint that wasn't him. She goes back to Ireland. And then another man played by uh, Domino Gleason. Yeah, that's right. Also is a great guy, also vying for her. I was like, this is a wonderful movie. Everyone here is wonderful. I love this. And the way <laughs> the way it ended is the way I wanted it to end. Uh this is a fantastic movie, man. The score is wonderful. The relationships are sweet. Like, I don't nobody was bad. Everyone was just amazing people. I I I <laughs> It was See, so you awesome. had a good love triangle and mine sucked. See, that's the problem. <laughs> you know, it way was too old for that cutie little Audrey Hepburn. Too old. <laughs> yeah, the, both both guys were great, but I had a preference on which guy, and luckily it worked out that way. But uh, it was this is a wonderful movie, man. I wish I watched this sooner. This is this is one of my favorite, like blind watches. That were recommended like ever. This is, nice. this is a fantastic movie. I just figured it you you would not like it. I didn't know how much you would like it. So. <laughs> like he can't be he can't hate it that much. It's a best picture nominee, and he likes the actress in it. So I figured. Yeah. It would be and I remember enjoying it more than I expected. I haven't watched it since the first time I watched it, probably around the time it came out. 
but yeah it's a solid movie i remember enjoying it a lot usually there's there's you know the the characters that bring the animosity and most most of this movie doesn't really have that besides like one character in ireland most of it's just plays out nice and happy i'm, I'm i i loved this so much <laughs> loved it happy in a non-cheesy way <laughs> yeah no it wasn't cheesy it wasn't yeah. cheesy uh I adored it. And I will say, this is one of the best-looking Blu-rays I've seen. Like, the Blu-ray is phenomenal looking. I was like, holy shit. This would be yeah, an amazing movie. 4K. She's great in the movie, too. Trisha Ronan. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. Donald Gleason, too. He's good in everything. I can't remember the guy who plays her man friend in the States, but yeah, he was good, too. I just can't he was really... He was such a great guy. I'm, I was waiting and waiting. Like, he's gonna do something to be an asshole or screw things up. I'm like, no, he's just a yeah. wonderful guy. Just a I wonderful remember. guy who's doing everything right. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, I always thought I'm like, oh, he's gonna get drunk and hit her or something. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting something, and it's like, nope, he's great, no issues. <laughs> the but ending I, is great too. I love the last scene of the movie. Yeah. Uh, Damn, man. See, my oh, guy's yeah. sleeping around with three women. <laughs> the ending. I love. I love endings that full circle to the beginnings of movies, and that movie does it. Wonderfully. Oh fantastically yeah. yeah that the movie the movie has her on the boat early going to the united states and it's the way it circles around at the end so good so so good it's uh man i that's gonna be one i'm gonna revisit several times you've got you got a five with both you got a Eight. five with the recommendation and a five with the movie you are uh, <laughs> you crushed it I, I mean i loved that one my wife loved it too Oh, oh good. that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay. Good to hear. Yay movie. Well done. Watch Brooklyn. <laughs> Best picture nominee. Yeah, Mike, they're gushing down there. I'm I'm guessing it's so quiet like, here. Neither of us saw it. Story of Brooklyn's about. I'm like, what is this? I don't know. Yeah. You haven't neither of you have seen it? I haven't seen it, no. And I was not. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you would probably like it if you watched it. No. Pass. You don't think I would like it? No, I don't know about you, but I'm just saying for, for Mike. Yeah, if, for I, me, if, yeah, I, Mike loved, if I love it, 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 like it, it. Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike might like it because it <sighs> is fairly act romantic in the way he likes things. Slash and the fact that it was a successful love romantic. triangle, I would appreciate it since I have not seen one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. all the movies like yeah. the actress is great. Love it's gorgeous to look at. They all the end up together. <laughs> a menage a trois. <laughs> they end up in a as a throuple in their mid fifties. <laughs> I'm in. Before it was cool. All right. <laughs> On to my rankings here. As you guys know, I rank all my movies, so I'm going to put this in order, of course. And they're all different scores this time. That, I don't think, has happened before, so that's interesting. Uh oh The first one, The Clear Bottom, and I and I try to be easy on this one. I'm like, man, I you know, I want to give it a different score here. I'm like, oh, no, but no. Blue Valentine, what the <laughs> heck was this? This was not a romance movie to me at all. It's okay. I should have specified. That's my bad. That was my fault. <laughs> Next time, if it's a drama movie, it cannot be a romance. If it's a romance, it is not drama. Okay. So, what the heck was this about, Tim? You're going to have to fill in the story gaps. But, okay. It was so confusing, too. It's like, <laughs> He's a mess. It's like if Christopher <laughs> Nolan tried to do a romance movie. Because there was so much jumping around in time. For a romance movie? What? Okay, so it was super confusing. But you got Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams. They're the couple it focuses on. And it goes back and forth between different, I think they're five years apart. Is it five, seven years? I don't know. In the future, they have a kid. So it has to be some kind of gap. But it shows how they first get together. They're all lovey-dovey. It's all sweet and nice. And you're like, oh, this is going to end nicely. Well, no, because then you see, I guess... Well, that would be the flashbacks, the flash forwards of it not going so nice. Ryan Gosling becomes very angry and they have a lot of fights. He like breaks into her work. She's a nurse or something and just starts yelling and all this stuff. 
Uh, she punches. No, he punches a doctor. I'm telling you, this movie is so freaking confusing. Well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and I, at first I'm like, what is this other couple? Because Ryan Gosling looks way different when he's older. I'm yeah. like, wait, is this yeah. supposed to be the same character? Like, I, eventually I got that they were. But anyway, it, they go through a divorce by the end of it. Very sad. That is all the movie is. There is no enriching to someone's life here. There's no like great theme or message. I guess a cautionary tale, maybe. But even that was tough to connect there. Uh, usually I like Ryan Gosling too, but here he was just kind of okay. Michelle Williams, I've never been a massive fan. I usually find her a little bit more bland. So once again, she was just kind of okay. There's a lot of doing it in the movie. So if you want a lot of doing it, you get you get all the spiciness there. Uh, my <laughs> wife walked in and was like, what the heck are you watching? I'm like, yeah. I swear, Tim recommended this, I swear. Check my messages. Tim recommended this. And then it was funny. By the end, Anna turns to me and is like, who hurt him? Like, who hurt Tim? <laughs> I'm like, that's what Tim likes. You know, Tim talks serious. So what was I supposed to expect here? But yeah, it was just a... I don't know what the point of the movie was by that. The, the point is relationships don't always work out. Things aren't always happy-go-lucky in relationships. Like 99% of movies show that things end up happy. It's nice and refreshing to actually see. Sometimes couples are just are not meant to be, which is part of why I adore La La Land. Some people yeah. just aren't meant to be. Like they could try and make it work, and sometimes they're they're – the way they, they mesh just is doesn't work. And some people just drift away. He was terrible. She wasn't great in different spots in the movie, though, too. Like, they weren't good to each other. Uh, they were not meant to be a couple. I, it, I think it's refreshing to see the other side sometimes instead of all just, you know, dances and roses thrown up in the air and the big kiss at the end. Sometimes people, people shouldn't be together. <laughs> so I think that message can still get across with an amazing movie I recommended to Derek when we first met. You still get that theme and message, but still a very nice, happy ending at the end. So that's the way to do that message for me anyway. So anyway, very sad movie. If you want something sad, go watch it. <laughs> so I'll give that recommendation. Tim, what were you thinking? I know, I know. It's my <laughs> fault partially. Yeah, I'm completely your fault. There's no partial. That's completely on you. Okay. I should have specified, you're right. I should have specified more. But dang. Just next time. Next time you know. That'll be a one a recommendation. What a recommendation. I even gave Mike an out afterward, too, because he said, I hope yeah. it's happy. And I said, No, it is not, Mike. I can give you something else. He's like, no, I'll run with it. Okay. I know. I, know. Yeah. I seconded that as well. <laughs> I sat through it. <laughs> oh, but okay, so one on recommendation, but it's not a one score. I want to be fair to this movie. I'll give it a two. Give it a two <laughs> score, which is well, still, being fair. <laughs> it wasn't offensively bad. It's watchable. Now, do you want to watch it? Is the question for me not my taste. I want to go watch it again. So because it has no rewatchability, and I didn't really get anything from it the first time, had to give it a two. So there we go. All right. Got yeah. that out of the way. Got that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it can only go up from here. Like I said, these are all different ranking scores. So, next up, we got Huck's recommendation <sighs> while you were sleeping. And you can actually see this one on Disney Plus. I like oh, that and, um, oh, I only one today. The other one, Blue Valentine, is on Max if you want to watch it. But yeah, so Disney Plus for while you were sleeping. And yeah, this was a nice little sweet delightful romance movie very hallmark like you got sandra bullock in the lead role who basically gets infatuated with this guy she sees um she's like in those one little booths at like a metrolink train station yeah he always sees this guy show up peter she gallagher yeah. yep she got the hots for him and then eventually he's getting mugged he falls onto the train tracks and gets like knocked out so he's in a coma, and she saves him, you know, picks him, gets him out of there, gets him to the hospital. And But she says to get in to see him, she says that uh, she's the fiancé. 
She's the fiance of this guy. She's never met, never met at all. And then everybody starts saying, oh, you're the fiance. You're the fiance. The family comes in. Oh, you're the fiance. How come we never met you? So now she's stuck with this lie and this facade she has to keep up that she is the yeah. fiance of this guy she never met. And he's completely in the coma. So he can't say anything right now. And then she's meeting all his different family members. She meets his brother, which I forgot the name of the actor. Pulion. That's Bill Pullman. Bill, Bill Pullman. Pullman. There we go. Yeah. yeah Pullman. Bill Pullman. So she meets him and then he kind of likes her and then they start talking and they have that kind of relationship, kind of, a, I don't know, cat and mouse relationship, I guess, at first. But eventually they start liking each other. But then you still have all this coma th thing happening, right? This lie yeah. that she still, so she can't tell him, right? She's still the fiance. Eventually, by the end, it comes out that, okay, she's not really the fiance because I guess an ex-fiance shows up and is like, what's going on here? And so, yeah, and then it ends happy. She gets with the brother because that's who she was meant to be with. Once again, you're able to say that message in a very happy way by the end. So, yeah, she ends up with the brother. And then like the that. other brother was okay with him because, you know, he was in a coma anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Everybody ended up happy. The family was good with everything at the end. So very nice, sweet, happy little romance story. Some funny moments in there. Uh, yeah, so uh, three. This gets a three. Well-made movie, well enough. I enjoyed my experience with it. Now, I can't take it to the next level because I'm not like, oh, you know, next time I'm in the romance mood, I got to go rewatch it again. That's how you get to a four for me, you know. So I'll put in a three. Good, solid romance recommendation. If you haven't seen it, it's worth a stream. Check it out. I don't think anybody's going to hate this one at all. Has everybody else seen Why You Were Sleeping? Long time ago. I haven't, actually. Yeah? <gasps> this is delightful. Yeah. I know the gist of it, but yeah. Well, yeah. I hope so. He just told you yeah. the whole just. Yeah. The, the, chemistry is good the, there. the chemistry is great. Eyebrows guy chemistry. gets hit by a train and yeah. still. Yeah, eyebrows guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, with, uh, so you're saying it's three and three, Mike? Three rec, three score? Uh, I don't know. Why'd you recommend it to me, Huck? <laughs> uh, well, because I know you like romances like okay. that, and and I felt it had a little bit of a that twist with the the uh, unconscious guy, you mm -hmm. know, and. And uh, it's it's a love triangle that's really not really a triangle, yeah. Yeah. and um, and it had really good stars that I think that their appeal would hold your attention. There you go. Yes, three on both accounts. Then, so yeah, <laughs> happy with that one. Satisfied with that. Did one. I have to say mm -hmm. that right to get a three out of you? Right. <laughs> I had to quiz you. I had to quiz you a little bit there. I had to make sure you know you were uh, just going out any old movie now. No, no, no. <laughs> And well, it's All also right. one you hadn't seen. So, you know, yeah. we always have that thing to deal with. That's 75 and, and I was happy I streamed it. I, that's what I'm learning to do with this collector's club. Stream yeah, stream, it, man. If you can, you know, preview before you buy. So that was good. Because Smart, if I man. bought Blue Valentine, that would. Well, right. <laughs> yeah. So that was good. That was good. All right. Number one, though. Congratulations, Derek. You're getting a lot of number ones here. Derek recommended Defending Your Life. All right. Ooh, now, yeah. I got the Criterion copy because that's the only way I could find it. So I paid a little oh, bit yeah. of a hefty Criterion price because it wasn't a sale time. So thank goodness the movie was good. Thank goodness. But there Defending Your Life, it stars <laughs> Albert Brooks, which I believe he directed and wrote the movie as well. Yep. At least that's what special features I think yep. was. He writes and directs most yeah. of his things he's in. There yeah. you go. And so he's the lead star here. I don't even think I've ever seen an Albert Brooks movie before. If not, I just didn't remember the face. But anyway, yeah, it's a, I, I don't even know if, I would say maybe more comedy than romance, but the romance does come up later. But pretty much he's, you know, going through his life and then he gets hit by a bus and he goes to Judgment City. So not heaven, not hell, Judgment City, which I thought was a really clever idea with something different, something I haven't seen before. And then apparently in Judgment City, you get judged for certain days of your life and everybody gets a different day amount. That was interesting, too. It's like some people get a few days. He got nine days. This other person got like 20 or 30 days. So that was kind of and it had you think in this movie, too. It was a good thinking movie because you would bring up questions. But anyway, so he's getting judged. I guess during the morning or something. I guess it's like court. He goes in the morning. He's Pretty like handling the yeah. court business in the morning. Then later on, he just gets to chill at this resort. He can go munch on some food. And the cool thing with the food, it's like 
delicious. Everything is delicious here. You can eat as much as you want, never gain a pound. That was a really cool idea. So you get to see all the restaurants he goes to. Yeah. (laughs) And all the people at the restaurants are like super nice that are serving them. And like this one restaurant gives him like nine pies to take home. And he's like taking the pies and he just drops them off. He like never even like eats them. He just drops them off. (laughs) It's funny. But yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So it's showing flashbacks of his life, like showing moments as a kid. And I think I like the theme and message here because it was about not did he live a good life, a bad life. It was more, okay, what was his obstacle? The big thing with him was fear. Okay, it was all about fear. When he was faced with fear, what did he do? And I thought that was a really interesting concept. I haven't seen that much either. So that was pretty clever. I thought that was cool. Different little twist on it. And then, yeah, so he would have to be judged. And if he didn't, I guess, pass judgment, he would be sent back again to live out another life on Earth. And apparently he's already been there like 20 something times. So that was interesting, too. But along the way, in Judgment City, this is where the romance comes in, he meets Meryl Streep. And everybody knows Meryl Streep, great actress, one of the best of our time. She's so good, right? So she just lights up the screen when she shows up. They start forming a bond. They start having dinner together. You know, they start, you know, googly eyes at each other eventually. And so they're uh, filling this romance. And then by the end, basically, you have these buses departing. The, some people are moving on. Some people are going back to Earth. And I love the moment because he's on this bus and he's not with her. She's on a different bus. And he's like, no, I'm going to conquer fear. I learned my lesson of taking on fear, not being afraid. And so he rips open the doors of the bus and then goes meets with Meryl Streep character. They love each other. It's all, you know, kissy happy by the end of it. So very nice, happy ending as well. Both a great theme and message and a twist on the genre so very very good movie i will give the recommendation a five recommendations of five because it was right up my alley and i'll give the movie a four four very good i would definitely rewatch this one if i'm in the romantic comedy mood so very good derek (laughs) it's a great movie yeah, <laughs> okay. and the criterion is great too. Like the special features on here, there's so many special features packed into this to see all the interviews with Albert Brooks and just the people that worked on the movie was great. Yeah, Rip Torn is great too. Is his lawyer? Oh, he's, and he's and yeah, it's yeah. I don't like a lot of romantic comedies. That's one I like. That's why I recommended it to somebody. I'm like, someone needs to watch this. So I'm glad you ended up getting it and you liked it that much. So that's good. I definitely yeah, feel that Albert Brooks is your type of humor too, Derek. Like oh, it just totally. cause this is really a little bit offbeat, you know? If, yeah. I have to see that again though. Like I remember try watching that decades ago and I didn't even I think I did not finish. Was it DNF? That yeah, one? You, DNF. <laughs> uh, you didn't it finish it, Huck? Huh? Well, well, I mean, again, I, I don't even know what the circumstance was. It was just I don't know if I was in the mood or what was happening. But I feel like it's something, especially the way you guys talk about it. Like, I don't know why I didn't click with it. So it seems like something uh, because, you'd really like. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, he is great in like uh, broadcast news. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And like him and Holly Hunter and William Hurt, they're so yeah, good together great. that I feel like if I liked him in that, if it's if he's that good in this movie, I'd probably like it. So I'll give it a watch. Yeah. Well, yeah, you should watch. I think you'd like it a lot. <laughs> Next oh. next July, go pick it up. <laughs> They're in their yeah, next hey, July, right. flash sale coming up at sometime end of February. Oh, yeah, maybe, so. yeah, they usually do it early in the year. Oh yeah, early. these blind buys. Look, I saw Tim's videos. Not for everybody. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad that was movie. good though. <laughs> I'm yeah, so glad I like the I life. haven't seen that. I want to get just because I like him so much. So yeah, and I mean, he's amazing really- in Drive. I'm just gonna say that because no one has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the most expensive Criterion I've ever picked up because it wasn't during a sale time. I always get Criterions during the sale time. Yeah, so, so do I usually. Thank, I'm like, please just be good. Please just be good. <laughs> Mike, you're oh, crazy, yeah. man. Go buy and get the damn DVD for a dollar. No, no, I don't think. I was, was there a DVD out there? 
Yeah, oh, God, I'm sure yeah. it exists. Yeah, so, uh, like it, it literally DVD. has the picture of it on IMDb. Yeah, but DVD. Look, you just got to see the movie. And if you like it, it cost me 50 yeah. cents. For this. It, was a, it was a half price sale, 50 cents. It's okay. It worked out, though, because I love the special features on there. It, you're lucky. You're right on out. this quality, so. Yeah. It worked out okay. Sometimes yeah, it okay. doesn't, but worst case scenario, I could have sent it to Huck and he could have watched it. Criterion <laughs> has go. lots of movies with downer endings, though. You oh can't God, no, no. No, I learned with yeah. Criterion what direction I go. I'm like, okay, comedies <laughs> are usually okay. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, did you guys want to go around real quick and maybe say what title you would have picked from everybody else to watch? Yeah. No. You mean what what they were watching? Yeah, out of the ones you haven't seen yet. Well, I guess let, let's repeat. So I had, yeah. so everyone remembers. So I yeah. had Adjustment Bureau, Intolerable Cruelty, and Sabrina. So if you haven't seen any of those three to the people, I guess, what would you have picked? If that's what you're yeah, saying. You're, yeah, you weren't selling me on either of those first two, Huck. So I don't know if they would be my direction. I, but I guess I'd I go Adjustment go Bureau because that's the only other one in his list that I hadn't seen. And it sounds a lot more interesting. Oh, that's so than good. The one I watched. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen the other. Or then Sabrina, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm lukewarm on that stuff. Yeah, I, uh, God, I feel like I saw Adjustment Bureau, though. That's like 2010 or 11, right? Yeah, it was um, around there. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw it and it just didn't really stick with me much. So I, I, I guess that. So so you would rewatch Sabrina, is what you're saying. <laughs> That's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you've seen them all, you might as well pick a rewatch. Unless yeah. you haven't seen Intolerable Cruelty, and then by default, you must watch that one. <laughs> well, you know what? I do have to watch that one because it's one of my goals to watch Coen Brothers movies this year. So by default, I would have to pick that one. Honestly, all out right. of all their movies, I think you might like that one the most just because it is a romantic comedy Ooh. that ends fairly happily and everyone's okay. pretty chipper in it. And it's <laughs> funny. Right. Well, right. And it's very funny. Clooney is extremely goofy, it, 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 but he yeah. sells it really well. And Jeffrey Rush. He's the, Jeffrey Rush is the husband in the beginning. Oh, my right? God. He's really funny in it, too. Yeah. And Billy Bob Thornton's in it somewhere. If I'm yeah, Billy Bob Thornton. Thornton. I tried to I keep it. out what he was. So, yeah, Billy Bob but, Thornton. Like, he's in there, right? Like, I'm just trying to remember. Yep. It's been a while since I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty it's a, stacked. It's a solid movie. I like, I like George Clooney's, like, assistant lawyer guy. He's oh, really that guy's funny. really funny. I don't remember his yeah. name. but it's, yeah. it's a solid movie, for sure. All right. You sold me on it. That's going to be the one. It's worth Go to Goodwill and buy it on DVD. They'll have three of them. Get the get yes, the they will. Copy. That's how many I get the live stream <laughs> copy. All right, and then Derek, what was your recommendations again? Or um, that you I got? had uh, when we first met, yes, the hell were they crazy rich Asians and the past lives? Those are the three I had. Well, I've the, seen all them, man, but I would re watch when we first met. <laughs> God, God. I would have to pick past lives because these two guys both sold that. Sorry, Mike, but they he didn't like it, so he didn't sell me the other one. But I will watch past lives. It sounds good. You should for the Oscars, right? For the yeah, Oscars. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go see Poor Things tomorrow night with Emma Stone. Yeah, that's why we're and, doing uh, it tonight, one. right? Is there gonna fancy yep. Hollywood Huck yeah. show? Of it's a Hollywood Huck screening with the, those two celebs. So I can't wait. So, yeah, so it's a, just be prepared for lots and lots of sex and lots of weird. I'm in. <laughs> you get, you know, there's a lot of vigorous jumping. There's a lot of uh, nudity, and it's hilarious. So you'll yes. wow. all my favorite things. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, hilarious, vigorous jumping. That's poor things. <laughs> vigorous jumping, nice. And then Tim, have you seen all those wrecks that Derek? Oh, yeah, again. <laughs> I, well, where I, are they again? <laughs> the, the one you gave have you seen the Netflix Great. movie you saw and forgot about or Crazy <laughs> wait, wait. Yet? I saw, yeah, I saw, I saw you've seen them all. You've I saw them all. <laughs> all right. All right, Tim, what was your Rex? Uh my Rex were Cyrano, Somewhere in Time, and Brooklyn. I want to check out Somewhere in Time. You guys convinced me on that one. I like time yeah. movies. Yeah. I want to watch Brooklyn oh, again it, because you I haven't seen it in a long, it, but uh, you made me not want to watch Cyrano, so I'll go somewhere in time. Cyrano is so good. I want to see Christopher Reeve and more things than Superman, like Hug said. What, I've only seen him in one of the movie. 
ending wise though like would mike like the ending to somewhere in time like it's uh, yeah well because he likes things that involve the need of tissues so yeah because like like mike because of your love for intolerable cruelty and that kind of like dramatic ending you know not to compare it but knowing that you like that i think that the 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 love but also sadness in somewhere in time you would enjoy perhaps <laughs> um i would have to pick brooklyn just because again cyrano sounds like a pile of shit so i'm not gonna give that a shot oh, Brooklyn's great watch brooklyn yeah. it's really cyrano good. is so good at god I, I, will, I will watch a clip on youtube okay and if, <laughs> if i'm gonna like youtube dinklage singing if he can't carry a tune i'm like he really know. He really can't. Well, oh it wasn't God. even about he had. It was poetry. It was very Romeo and Juliet style. So if it's you a like, musical. It's it's a musical. The music is okay. there. Don't go look, in thinking about music. Poetry. It's a musical. Look, what do you mean? Oh. Don't go thinking about music. It's a musical. Yeah. <laughs> and look, I've already seen Cyrano uh, with Jose Ferrer. I've seen Roxanne with Steve Martin. So I know the story very well. Right, I assume Sorry, this is yeah, still that same, same thing, right? Cyrano, this is that yeah, same, God, yeah. Rock band is Cyrano, yeah. that's right, yeah. So, sounds yeah, like Brooklyn's good though, it's a solid movie. I, it's been so long since I've seen it, I can't say much about it other than I remember really liking it. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, Mike, yeah. what's your life? yes, defending your life, uh, Blue Valentine, and why you were sleeping? What are you all watching? I saw them all. I've seen while you were sleeping because I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. I probably know I prefer the other two. <laughs> and I'll just Move do Defending Your Life. Yeah. Nice. You'd like to, you'd love Defending Your Life, I think, yeah. if you watch it again. Blue Valentine is great if you're not watching a romantic comedy and you want to watch a movie about realistic relationships with great acting. All right. <laughs> Defending Your Life, it is. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. there we go. That wraps up our recommendations. Did anybody have anything they wanted to shout out, promote before we close up? Uh, no, not really. Um, I'm gonna go see Poor Things tomorrow night with the celeb. So that's all I got. Out of theater reaction from you, Huck. Uh, yeah. yeah. If I if I if I can squeeze that out, definitely. Nice for sure. Awesome. Shoot a video of Mark Ruffalo and Emma Stone awkwardly from your seat. Right, to try, try to like get him in the shot, you know. Yeah, yeah. Use a weird depth of field where it looks like you're with them somehow. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> use special effects. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to say other than uh, I just recently uploaded a couple of weird, not weird, but new things. I haven't done much on my channel. I've been I did a ranking of the best picture winners of the 21st century, and just today, like a couple hours before this, I did a best actors of the 21st century oscar winners ranking on my channel give those a look and a listen and uh tell me what i got wrong because i like comments <laughs> okay <laughs> <we will>. right. <laughs> you are wrong tim anything yay brooklyn besides that <laughs> no. well don't, don't forget the the 70s challenge oh yeah, do that, yeah. yeah it's already out there i don't like promoting myself i want to promote yay brooklyn <laughs> okay <laughs> all right and then for my channel tomorrow should be an out of theater reaction for lisa frankenstein so going in oh, with yeah, no yeah. expectations we'll see how that turns out and then my next stream will be i think it's monday night james wan filmography stream so we're going to run through all his titles talk about them have a group ranking it's everything from saw to aquaman 2 so if that interests <laughs> you that should be a fun time uh, but yeah, that's it for me. So everybody have a good Valentine's Day out there. Go watch some romance movies and yeah, have a good time. Happy Valentine's Day. Go watch Blue Valentine. <laughs>